Vaccines are helping to keep us safe from COVID. This is perhaps the greatest achievement in modern medicine. It's really miraculous. But in poorer countries, too few people are getting the jab. What we're seeing is a huge divide between the vaccinated and protected rich and the unvaccinated and unprotected poor. So are rich countries keeping too many vaccines for themselves? There's no question that lives have been lost as a result of the inequitable distribution of vaccines. Hundreds of thousands, probably more. Are the drug companies putting profits before lives? This one small corporation has reaped a huge windfall, even as billions of people around the world still do not have access to a vaccine. And are some people simply cashing in? Thanks to the excessive profits made from these vaccines, nine new vaccine billionaires now exist. The global fight against COVID starts here in Copenhagen. This giant warehouse stores billions of items of medical equipment. Supplies for the biggest vaccination program in history. This is the largest humanitarian warehouse in the world. It has about 20,000 square meters. It is almost fully automated. It's led by the World Health Organization. Wealthy countries provide the cash and international bodies like UNICEF do the work. The program's called COVAX and it's part of a plan to protect 5 billion people from COVID. When we talk about COVAX, everybody gets very, very focused around the vaccines, but we also need syringes, safety boxes, personal protective equipment, and other materials that health workers can so safely deploy uh, the vaccination programs on the ground. The idea is that COVAX buys billions of vaccines at the cheapest price. It then shares the doses out fairly so that poorer countries don't lose out. Global vaccination is good for wealthy countries too. It's the best way to stop the virus mutating and coming back to endanger us all. People are exhausted. They want out of this pandemic. Well, these viruses that they're worried about, the Omicrons, the Deltas, the Betas, they're not arising in the UK. They're arising in the other parts of the world where we're not sharing the vaccines. You can't escape these viruses in, a, uh, in an interconnected world like we are. What you've got to do is vaccinate everywhere. The World Health Organization is based here in Geneva. Its aim was to vaccinate 40% of the population in every country by the end of 2021. But the plan has gone badly wrong. So far, only 6.5% have been protected in low-income countries. The global rollout of the vaccines is massively behind schedule, and the plan to vaccinate the world seems to be falling apart. One of the targets was to have 40% coverage by the end of December of 2021. We know that by that time point, there were 92 countries that hadn't achieved 40% coverage. They simply did not have the vaccine. So what's gone wrong with the plan? One problem is that richer nations have bought their own vaccines and they have stockpiled far more than they need. Globally, 12 billion doses have been made. That's enough to give every adult in the world two jabs. But most have been bought by wealthy countries, leaving COVAX at the back of the queue. This is the biggest international public policy failure of our times. And it's the biggest failure because it is so avoidable. The vaccines are available, but the G7 countries, uh, Europe, America, uh, the United Kingdom insisted on having the contracts and the result is that vaccines that should be available uh, for Africa and for the low-income countries are actually being destroyed 
because they're passing the use-by date and having been stockpiled in the United Kingdom, they're having to be just thrown away. The UK government has supported COVAX and given a billion dollars of funding. But 600,000 vaccines have been destroyed here after passing their expiry dates. Another problem for COVAX is the drug companies. The British AstraZeneca jab is the cheapest at around $3 a dose. But other drug companies charge far more. Moderna's the most expensive. Its vaccine usually costs wealthy countries more than $30 a shot. We've seen throughout this pandemic that the big pharmaceutical corporations have sold the vast majority of their doses to rich countries where they can make the highest profit margin and consistently push developing countries to the back of the vaccine queue. Just 2% have been delivered to, to those poorest countries. Some drug companies did agree to sell vaccines to COVAX at cheaper prices. But even then, they didn't always honour the contracts. In 2021, Moderna failed to deliver 20 million promised doses. But the worst offender is Johnson & Johnson. It promised COVAX 200 million doses, and only 4 million have turned up. Johnson & Johnson says it's provided its vaccines globally on a not-for-profit basis, and it continues to fulfil contractual obligations to COVAX. Well, I think as we look around the world at what happened in terms of supply, it, it's very clear that low-income countries um, were the ones that, that suffered the most in terms of their uh, constraint on supply. Those are the countries that were being served through COVAX. And we just have to look at the map um, to see where the countries had the, the lowest supply access. Africa has been hardest hit. This is the Ivory Coast, one of 47 countries on the continent that has failed to reach the 40% vaccination target. With people living so close together, the jab should be their main defence. Daily life doesn't allow for social distancing here. And in the absence of that and other safety measures, vaccines are vital in the fight against COVID. The Ivory Coast is doing better than most African countries. 11% of people have been vaccinated twice. But that's still far below the country's vaccination target. Here in, in Côte d'Ivoire, the target is 14 million people fully vaccinated. We stand right now at about 5 million people that have been vaccinated. What have some of the problems been in delivering and hitting your target? Well, the first is the availability of vaccines. So that's the, the biggest issue. Some countries are receiving their third booster shots. What we need is that uh, all Africans are receiving a minimum uh, the first uh, the first shot. Tonight is a big moment in the Ivory Coast's fight against the virus. A large delivery of vaccines is finally arriving at the airport in the capital city, Abidjan. This plane's carrying two million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines. They've been donated from Italy and Spain. It's the biggest shipment this country's seen so far. The labels on the boxes say COVAX, but COVAX hasn't bought these doses from drug companies. It's simply delivering leftover vaccines that have been donated by Western governments. This is clearly a big deal for the Ivory Coast because they've brought a cabinet minister down onto the tarmac along with embassy staff from Spain and Italy to welcome the vaccines. Hundreds of millions of vaccines have been donated this way, including 30 million from the UK. We ran out of vaccines at one point, so any donations coming from friendly states like the UK would be appreciated. We really need them to fully vaccinate the majority of the population. 
The donations are welcome, but poor countries can still lose out. Donated vaccines sometimes come at short notice and with a short shelf life. Some have been destroyed after arriving in Africa because they were out of date. Yeah, the difficulty for low-income countries is that you can't stand up a vaccine program unless you know how much supply you're going to have and when you're going to have it. They couldn't anticipate, they couldn't actually say to their population, here's who we need to vaccinate, when we need to vaccinate, we're going to have the vaccine. So it really undermined also the confidence of communities and populations in vaccine programs. Countries like the Ivory Coast have to make do with what they're given. This is the national storage place where we store all the vaccines that arrive. We are at half an hour from the airport. The first thing we do once we unload the plane is we come here and we store the different vaccines in the different fridges depending okay. on of the type of vaccines. It's often a race against time to get donated vaccines into arms before they're out of date. So here we have Johnson & Johnson. A little bit further we have AstraZeneca. Here in the capital, they have enough fridges to keep the vaccines cool. But that's not always the case in poorer countries. Even it cool is critical? Yes, it is really critical. Temperatures rise up to 35 degrees. So in a truck like this, you really have to ensure that the vaccines are kept cold. These doses are heading to Ivory Coast's second largest city. There's 180,000 vaccines on the back of that lorry, and it's going to travel for the next four and a half hours to Boaki. This is just one lorry load. Thousands of deliveries like this are needed in low-income countries. It's a huge challenge to get vaccines to remote communities. It's not just the purchase of vaccines, it's getting them out to where they're needed. And there are logistical complexities. Roads during the rainy season are very difficult to, uh, to, to pass. When the vaccines arrive at the distribution center in Boaké, they have to be refrigerated again. They'll be used to protect people across central Ivory Coast. There's often not enough vaccines to go round. But today, the vaccination team have got doses waiting to be delivered. The best way to get to the remote villages is by motorbike. This batch of vaccines are from AstraZeneca and they've traveled thousands of miles to finally get here. And this is the last leg of their journey. It's a big day for the village of Alacro. The people here have been waiting months to be protected from COVID. And they've all agreed to be vaccinated today. It's a year since vaccines were widely rolled out in the West. but there are countless communities around the world still waiting for protection. In some countries, vaccination rates are below 1%. Countries didn't hit 40% coverage because they couldn't get access to the vaccine. And remember, as a result, people died. This has taken a terrible, terrible toll. There's no question 
that lives have been lost as a result of the inequitable distribution of vaccines. Hundreds of thousands, probably more. African countries didn't just wait for COVAX to deliver vaccines. Working together, they ordered their own through the African Union. The drug companies signed contracts, but once again, they haven't delivered all the vaccines they promised. So not only did we see that the big pharmaceutical corporations were delaying as much as possible making any contracts with the likes of the African Union, but then the, the amounts that they actually were promising were very, very small. And in the case of Moderna, we were aware of a contract for around 110 million doses, and they promised to deliver 15 million of those before Christmas. Now, this is already a very small number, but as far as we're aware, not one of those doses have been delivered to date. Not one. Not one. Moderna says capacity issues on the ground have delayed some deliveries. It says it remains focused on ensuring global access for its vaccine and that it's prepared to provide up to 650 million doses to COVAX this year, with millions of additional doses committed to the African Union. But there's no doubt drug companies have made most of their cash selling vaccines to wealthy countries. The vaccines have been huge earners for some of the drugs companies. Last year, Johnson & Johnson made almost $2.4 billion from the sale of its vaccine. Moderna made between 15 and 18 billion, and Pfizer made $36 billion. The creation of vaccines so quickly has saved millions of lives. But the drug companies didn't do it alone. Governments invested billions in the scientific research that made them possible. So shouldn't they be used to protect as many people as possible? We live in a world that are going to let market forces dictate some of this, but in a pandemic you can't. Every single CEO will stand up and say, we want our vaccine to be used everywhere in the world. We want our vaccine to save lives everywhere. That's very easy. Send your vaccine to COVAX. It will get everywhere in the world. It will save lives everywhere. It's not just the companies profiting. Individuals have to. The COVID vaccine has created nine new billionaires. Four are shareholders in Moderna, including CEO Stefan Bansell, who's now worth $4.6 billion. So I think on the part of the, the majority of the pharmaceutical corporations, we've seen greed dictate their behavior and they have put maximizing profits ahead of maximizing the number of lives saved. They treated this, these vaccines as their own private property and have maximized profit at every turn. The drug companies say they've invested heavily in their vaccines and are committed to protecting people around the world. I have come to Boston to investigate Moderna. It's an American success story, but it makes the most expensive vaccine, and only 1% of doses have ended up in low-income countries. At the beginning of the pandemic, Moderna was a small company with no products. I want to understand how they went from that to producing the most successful COVID vaccine in a matter of months. Moderna had help. The US government gave the company $1.4 billion in research grants, and it agreed to spend $2.7 billion on the vaccine before it was known to work. This one small corporation has reaped a huge windfall, despite the fact that it has benefited immensely from taxpayer funding. Multiple people involved in Moderna are now billionaires, even as billions of people around the world still do not have access to a vaccine. Moderna didn't invent the vaccine by itself either. US government scientists did much of the research. I was in Time Magazine twice this year. I was, I was one of the hundred influential people that they listed in. Dr. Barney Graham led the team. None of the key scientists worked for Moderna. 
me and Dr. Corbett, who worked with me on this Moderna vaccine, and Dr. Weissman and Carrico, who worked on the chemistry of RNA vaccines, um, we were called the heroes of the year in Time magazine. Dr. Graham's team was working with Moderna before the pandemic. They were looking at making vaccines using part of our genetic code called mRNA. So when coronavirus first appeared, Dr. Graham and Moderna agreed to make an mRNA COVID vaccine. I talked to Stefan Bonsell on the 7th of January and, and uh, he said, as soon as you uh, design the vaccine antigen or the protein sequence, we'll make it and we'll start the program. Yeah, the, story starts here and... the idea was that the government scientists would design the vaccine and Moderna would make it. This uh, consortium of clinical trial networks. Dr. Graham's team came up with the coding sequence for the vaccine in a week and he emailed it to Moderna. We went just as fast as we could. And so we got the sequences, we designed all the reagents we needed, we designed the vaccine uh, prototype that we thought would work best, and they started manufacturing it right away. Moderna manufactured the vaccine and it made the vaccine, but it wasn't even doing the early experiments with it. So, the vaccine that Moderna made was really, it was a collaboration, but it was, it was really made by Barney Graham. So the vaccine was part invented by government scientists and part funded by the US taxpayer. But Moderna claimed ownership for itself. The company applied for a patent on the formula and refused to credit the government scientists. Here you have the federal government asking this corporation, will you list these scientists as having co-invented this part of the vaccine? And Moderna said no. It was shocking. Who gets to be able to say that these are our vaccines? And if you think that the federal government uh, played this critical role and was involved in the development of the vaccine, then by definition, these are the people's vaccine. Moderna says its scientists invented the mRNA sequence for the vaccine. It accepts there's a dispute and it's pausing the patent process in the US to allow discussions with the government. But the patent is crucial. The US government wants the vaccine to be sold cheaply around the world. And that's unlikely unless the patents are waived. Moderna makes an expensive vaccine. And the problem is, is that the whole world needs to be vaccinated. And the whole world cannot afford Moderna's vaccine. The company definitely sees this vaccine as its huge profit maker. Moderna says that over the past 10 years, it has pioneered the transformative field of mRNA technology. It says because of many years of investment and collaboration with partners, including the US government, it was ready to develop and launch our COVID-19 vaccine on an unprecedented time frame, which has helped protect hundreds of millions of people around the world. The pharmaceutical companies have got a responsibility to the world. If they have developed uh, new technologies that produce uh, you know, amazing new vaccines, we should thank them for it. But equally, at the same time, once you've got the vaccine, surely the one thing you want to do if you're the developer of this vaccine is to make sure the rest of the world actually has it uh, rather than it are excluded from it. It's people in poor countries who are losing out. Here in South Africa, researchers are developing a vaccine that's similar to Moderna's. It would only cost a fraction of the price. 
we have a target, which is around two US dollars. We cannot tell yet whether we can get to that, but we're certainly working towards a target. I think it's absolutely essential that this continent establish its own end-to-end -end vaccine manufacturing capacity and capability. This laboratory is part of an information hub set up by the World Health Organization to share information about vaccines. But drug companies like Moderna have refused to take part. And that means the cheaper South African vaccine could be delayed by up to three years. Moderna has not shared anything with Acrogen specifically or with the hub specifically. Moderna does share in their weekly scientific uh, discussions with the global community uh, very interesting signs. But, but the, the real, real know-how and the trade secrets that would, would fast track us is, is not being shared. The cheaper vaccine is also being delayed by a new patent Moderna has filed in South Africa. Once again, it stops rivals copying Moderna's recipe. Moderna says it's not enforcing any COVID patents during the pandemic. But scientists have to be careful not to infringe them anyway, because the company can start enforcing the patents whenever it decides the pandemic is over. Moderna learned how to scale up its vaccine and mass produce its vaccine on the taxpayer's dime. We know that there are other scientists, other manufacturers who want to make mRNA vaccines who could benefit from this foundational knowledge. And so now the question arises, why is the knowledge that was funded by taxpayers kept a secret? In poor countries, the vaccine rollout is faltering. COVAX is now running out of cash. It says it can no longer afford to even deliver the donated vaccines from wealthy countries. The World Health Organization is appealing for more money. Everyone has a role to play, right? But the $16 billion that we need, we need from high income, upper middle income countries, the countries that are in a stronger economic position, Everyone has to help. The plan to vaccinate the world is hanging by a thread. The world has failed to come together. We are not acting as if uh, there is a multilateral order. We're acting as if it's a free for all. And that of course is the reason why so many people are dying. The message is simple. Until everyone is protected, we're all vulnerable. What could happen at any moment is that this virus can mutate in a way that the vaccines are no longer working. So there is a rush, there is an urgency to get the entire world vaccinated. If we fail to act now, we could all end up losing out in the fight against COVID. A global pandemic is not going to be solved by immunizing a fraction of the population. This is a global pandemic. It's got to have a global solution. It's in all our interests to vaccinate the world. So isn't it time we got the vaccine rollout right?